Hello, everybody. Welcome to the IC Topic Chats for Thursday, August, what is it, 17th, 2023. We're talking about my favorite topic. I talk about it all the time. I've posted about it on AEA 365. Um, anybody who talks to me for more than 10 minutes gets onto this topic somewhere or another. It's called networking karma. It's actually a concept that was uh, thrown out at a, a session at a meeting that I went to for an alumni association meeting here for Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville. I looked up the concepts. Um, I read the book that the guy referenced. I couldn't find anything really called networking karma. I think that was his own term and I've adopted it. And I wish I could think of who that was, but I can't even find the guy's name anymore, but I use it all the time. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, if you've paid attention to the, the whole niche idea, we talk about hedgehog. The hedgehog concept is this idea that Jim Collins talks about where you have three overlapping circles, a Venn diagram of doing when you're thinking about what you're trying to do within your consulting practice. Do what you love, think about what you're good at and what you can be paid for. If you do all three of those things, you'll have a sustainable, happy project, happy uh, business that will be sustainable. Um, and I've talked about that for years and this is a book that is more than 20 years old now, and, but it's still the number one business book on all the New York Times bestsellers and all that. It's been, I've sold more of those than anything else. But I like to think of something that's come along recently, and this is an Americanization of an idea of the Iki guy. And there's a fourth overlapping circle that I want to want you to think about. And I think in our world of program evaluation, which largely serves nonprofits and government organizations, um, we effectively, and the way I look at it, is we serve the people who are trying to save the world, right? Or at least keep the world going in a sustainable way. Um, and so when we think about our business, I think it's important that we're thinking about the public good beyond just, you know, what we can do. We're not selling shoes here. We're not trying to sell ice cream. Um, we're, we're, we're supporting people who are trying to do good for the world. Um, overwhelmingly, it seems that way anyway. And so that's a perspective that I bring to my practice. And I think most of you do too. And so that's just a, a background and a, a reference point for who we are. So when we talk about net, networking, a lot of people say, oh, I can't network. I'm an introvert. I don't like talking to people. I like sitting at my computer and plugging away on my data analysis or whatever. And then some people think of themselves as extrovert. I'm going to press the idea that some of the best people to network around program evaluation about independent consulting are in fact not the extroverts like myself, um, the people who are introverts. And the reason for that is usually this is the point where I ask you the question, but we're not gonna do the back and forth today. So we're in a recorded session and we'll talk about this later. But the reason for this, I think, is because you're not thinking about what you're gonna say next to, because you gotta get the word out there like us extroverts, because you as the introvert or as introverts they're thinking internally about what's going on and they're reflective and they're, and they're, they're processing. So when you ask a question, you're thinking very thoroughly about what you're doing. And I think introverts are better at connecting with people. And so if you're the introvert saying, I can never be an, I can never be a networker. I can't market. I'm going to suggest, well, you're thinking about this all wrong because the reality is we're, we're building our relationships around, we're building, our networking around our relationships with others. So here's a couple ideas from that I that I think are the two pieces to networking karma that I want you to, to think about. And these both come from this book from Keith Ferrazzi and Tal Raz called Never Eat Alone. Um, I do recommend this book. I, I'll, I'll caution you, the, 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 the big idea in all of this is exactly why you'd wanna read this book and everything I'm talking about today. It is very kind of networky. He, there's an entire chapter on how to get somebody to return your phone call, which made me a bit groan and I felt a little, you know, upset, got an upset stomach listening to it. I was out listening to it while I was rocking, walking along. And um, I was like, okay, that was a little bit over the top. But his big idea are two big things. He has a lot of concepts in here, but I love these two pieces. Um, the first one, and this is something that this is where Icy Topic Chats comes from. This is how I operate in my life and the way that I network with others. Um, first, it's the second piece on here. Don't keep score. 
I give freely of myself and, I'm encur and I, I encourage other people to give freely of themselves um, because uh, when you do, great things happen. And why do they happen? I have no idea. I don't know why. Um, but that if you are giving without asking for people to give in return, then you are giving freely of yourself. You are giving karma, out, you're giving positive karma out into the world. The second piece is social arbitrage. And that's a word, uh, word combination that never made any sense to me at, until I had to look it up and he defined it for me. But the social arbitrage idea is to become indispensable to others by strengthening your connections with others, to, be, to give to others in ways that they need you or that they want you to be a part of their activities going forward. And so if you can build, so really what we're getting into is a social networking analysis concept. We're going to get there in just a second, but you're, you're building your, your connections with others through the social arbitrage and by, by giving without keeping score. There's no expectations that anybody returns a favor for you, right? So those things develop relationships with people. And then down the road, things happen. Good things happen. And, the, and you're going to see dividends that you never expected. Um, and I'm going to give examples of, of very specific things that have happened to me along those lines, just a little bit. So karma, just to kind of take these words apart, that working in karma, you know, karma is that spiritual principle of cause and effect or intent and actions of an inv individual cause or influence the future of that in individual. So if you put good out into the world, good things come back to you. If you put bad out into the world, eventually bad things will come back into you. And I, I think a lot of us going, well, you know, that I've been, I've been beat up over the years. And maybe that's true. I do believe within our community of practice or our individual communities of practice that where we operate, so for me, it's um, STEM education, military connected, uh, military connected evaluation work. When I put good things out there, good things come back to me. The other piece is networking. And so when you have an opportunity to work with people, why not put yourself at, at least at the center and connect with people? And the ways that I have networked over the years is not just by being a part of the independent consulting TIG, which you know, and I was the TIG chair and this informal leadership role that um, I kind of taken on with the IC topic chats. But like within my client groups, whenever there's a meeting, um, I will go to those meetings um, as the evaluator. I don't know, sometimes I'm required to be there. Um, sometimes it's optional. I always wanna go because I realize, well, if my client's there, there's gonna be a lot of other people who need program evaluation there. So maybe I can sit and make a conversation at a breakfast table. Um, but what I found is why not go to those meetings and you know gather the evaluators together or put on a session for evaluators? Because usually I've had this, this happened with the math and science partnership grants back when we had those. We would be required to go to these meetings. It was fun to travel and everything, but then you'd show up and there'd be nothing for the evaluators. So I finally reached out to the coordinators, the people who put it together and said, hey, can I put on a session for evaluators because we're all bored over here. And so what happened was I'd put on sessions about evaluation and people would show up and I got clients and it was like, whoa, this is a good idea. I'm onto something here. And that was actually the early days of understanding how to network with potential clients at these conferences because there were people who had evaluators, but they weren't satisfied. They weren't the good people like we are today. Um, they were the ones who just were phoning it in or charging way too much and you know, not really producing a quality product. They weren't doing like Nadine was and thinking about how you can do interactive data dashboarding and, and those types of um, interactive um, vi data visualizations. So find a way to put yourself at the center of the network. Um, don't, do, don't do anything that feels inor inorganic. That's, you wanna do things that are organically comfortable for who you are. Um, if you have a comfort with, with these people, reach out to them, talk to them. But everybody's looking for more engagement. There's all, particularly around conferences, there's oftentimes people just dying for something to kind of make it a little bit better. And if you can come up with a good idea that you think, you know, will make sense, do that. So another book that I'm very big fan of, actually, I love this author is Malcolm Gladwell. Um, he's written a lot of books. The Tipping Point was one of his early ones that um, where he talked about how 
let's see, I didn't bring the book with me, but the tipping point is about how you can take an idea and it can become a big thing. It's kind of using this idea of, of, a, of a virus, a viral spread of things. Um, and he, getting into the book, he talks about three types of individuals that help this viral, something go viral. And one of them is the connector. Um, and the connector is the people who helps connect people to one another. So when you go to find out how something become, became viral or you realize there's oftentimes one person who knows all the people that come together. He says, the point about connectors is that by having a foot in so many different worlds, they have the effect of bringing them all together. So how can you be that connector? So put, I'm gonna throw some ideas out at, out at you for ways that you can be, you can be a, a, a social networker. You can be, you can think about networking karma. Um, within your community, you could join the library board, right? So this is an air, this is a low stakes way. If you are involved with library evaluation, this helps you understand what's going on there. Rotary is a fantastic way if you're trying to build your um, capacity within your community. You want to connect with other people, small business owners within your community. I learned a lot from just being a part of a running club. I know that it has nothing to do with my program evaluation business, but I learned quite a bit about just connecting with people, asking, um, creating sponsorships, creating contracts. I, I joined the board and it gave me some board understanding. Um, actively getting involved with the American Evaluation so Association or your local affiliate. This, by the way, Linda, is a picture from the, uh, I think it's the Atlanta Area Evaluation Association. I think I think I even used this picture when I gave that presentation to your guys a couple of years back. Um, or even getting more involved with your other affiliates. So I helped found the uh, Evaluation Association of St. Louis. Um, and so that was a way that I connected within my community. For people who are trying to start trying to find who that community is within their local community, and you're looking for ways to get, uh, you know, evaluation contracts, I suggest another group. I don't have the a picture of it here, but the, the Grant Professionals Association (GPA) they have chapters in every major city, um, and probably even in smaller cities. I bet they even have one in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm, I'm sure they'd have one in Omaha. Um, I know they're based out of Kansas City, but uh, that's a group of people that get together and talk about how to, well, there's a lot of grant writers. They're, they're grant professionals. There's a lot more to it, but really they're probably 90% grant writers. But those grant writers are always looking for evaluators. And so um, I joined that local organization um, and, the, and the national organization as a result too. And I go and speak probably once a year on program evaluation. And guess what? They call me up and ask me to do, to do evaluation um, proposal sections for things and grants have come that way. So that's another suggestion. Oh, and then of course the ICTIG. So that's uh, our, our little mascot there. Here's something networking karma is not. Do you remember the, the Godfather movie? Someday and that day may never come. I'll ask you a service of you after the individual asked for a favor. No, when people ask you for a favor, you, you give freely of yourself, right? you um, don't expect something to come because what happens when you um, create this expectation, you, you kind of commoditize. Uh, your, your keeping score means you have now made it transactional. And so it, it, it takes something away from the relationship that you're building um, because within the social networking concept, you're trying to widen your, your bonds with people, right? your connections with them are thicker that way. Um, networking karma is, well, it's all those little signs you find um, at the store that we hang on our wall, right? It's all these work hard and be nice kind of things. Throw kindness around like confetti, stay humble and work hard and be kind. That's networking karma. Putting, putting, a, um, putting a positive spin and a trying to connect with people in ways that are natural and organic. Okay, as I like to do, I like to do my five and a half key networking karma ideas. Um, so here's a couple. 
find your people and go see them. Okay, so that's key. That's key to go see them. Not only find your people, but you've got to actively engage with those folks. We want to give without expectations to strengthen those bonds or edges. Now we're not doing it because we want to strengthen bonds. You give without expectations because it feels good and it's nice and it, and it feels good to be nice to people. And then good things happen because of it, because karma is real. Um, and another piece of all of this is while you don't have an expectation that anybody will give anything to you, it will be very natural for you to ask for favors because you have that relationship built because these are your friends now. These, are co these colleagues are connected to you in ways that are important and meaningful. And if you need something, you can ask them for it and they will provide it because they'll do this. They do the same thing to you all the time. They're asking from you. Now, if, it, if it's not convenient or if it doesn't make any sense, then they won't. And that's okay too, because they're not able to, but there's no expectation, but it will happen and it will be okay. How can you be that hub? How can you that, be that connector? How can you, when people just this last week, I got um, an opportunity that was not meant for me. It was meant for somebody else, but I, but the individual who reached out to me said, um, how can I find somebody who's good at this? And it was some, it was uh, for a program that was based in Arizona. And so I mentioned some people that I know who do that type of work in Arizona. And so I don't know what's going to happen there, but I certainly hope good things happen, but that's exactly what it was. I was that hub or that connector in that situation. And um, I suspect, you know, there'll be a contract at some point with a program evaluator. And it makes me feel good to know that I was able to make that connection. And I expect nothing that will come up, nothing's going to come of that directly or as, as a direct result of that. But perhaps I've, I've put some good out into the world and it will come back to me someday. And just know that your skills and your opportunities will come from unlikely places. The <clears throat> well, classic example I like to talk about for why, how things like this happen. Well, recently we had, I, I've been doing program evaluation in you know Illinois for 12 years. And I've connected with people, just like I said, all along the time, trying to put good connections out there, good, good, um, do good work and good work will follow, um, good opportunities will follow. Um, but completely out of the blue, somebody who used to work for the Illinois State Board of Education and who now works for an intermediate service center called me up and said, hey, we wrote you into this grant for a very large amount of money and uh, we, we want it. And hey, do you want that project? And it was perfect for us. Um, and then they said, oh yeah, by the way, we have a second one that we, we also got funded and it's even more money. And I was like, okay, how did this happen? Because it was just raining like amazing opportunities that day. Um, and that was networking karma, 100%. I just basically did good work. I connected with people expected nothing in return and it just completely fell out of the sky and into our lap um, and that's what that was all about the other classic example is stem camp stem camp um kurt and susan are on our evaluation panel that helps review it but i connected with military connected communities over the years and we provided program evaluation to them but you know we also just connected with them because we liked them and they're good people. And so when an opportunity came along with the Department of Defense to write a big grant, um, it was a beautiful connection between um, us being able to use our resources with them to help us write this grant that was worth a million dollars a year, but also it provided most of that back to the, the military connected community. So they were definitely interested in being a part of that. I got to be the, the intermediary in all of this. And so we were able to create a program that now affects 1500 military connected students each year um, around STEM experiences. And we've, we're seeing phenomenal results. And so um, really I can't find a loser in this whole situation. And now we just proposed for a much larger opportunity. And so we think we might be able to um, serve up to 5,000 students a year if the next opportunity comes through. So who knows, but uh, wish me luck. Finally, remember to follow your bliss, but pay attention, you know, go in the ways that feel comfortable with you. I don't want you to do anything that's inorganic, that feels wrong, that's just awkward. Um, there's gonna be a little bit of awkwardness, but I mean, it's, that's, that's 
um, you stress, not distress. It's positive stress, right? So follow that you stress um, where you feel out of a little crazy, but you need to pay attention in the ways that um, it, it's, it affects your business. How can I create a connection here that may be able to, um, you know, make positive impact for my clients or create an opportunity for me to do some good work for these people? Thanks for listening. Here's some books that I referenced here, The Tipping Point from Malcolm Gladwell. How little things can make a big difference. Never Eat Alone by Keith Brazi and Tal Raz. And here's some sessions that are coming up. Oh, I, I want to say a couple things about these. Nina and Kathleen from I2I, they're wonderful. What a wonderful success story those two are. They just kind of came out of nowhere and now they've built this big, this big practice. Um, two weeks from now, we're going to be talking about the the new ICTIG survey, the one that nobody's heard about, except they completed it last fall. No results have been shared until August 31st. And we're gonna be, I'm mean, starting off with the stuff everybody loves to talk about finances and fees. So I can share some things about what your peers are charging, what their, what their, you know, their annual revenues, stuff like that. We're, we'll have another one on September 14th about marketing. Um, and I also want to point out on September 21st, I'm going to start up a new series on firm topics. Why be a firm? And so I think er, probably four times a year, we'll do a firm topic. Um, but that'll be the whole idea. What we do in January, we do the why be an independent consultant? Well, this is the, the, the flip side of that coin. Why be a firm? Um, and so for those of you who have started a consulting practice and you're thinking, should I hire? Should I grow? Do I want to be a CEO and not do I want to work? on the business and not in the business, um, that'll be the, the topic for you. These other topics are also great stuff too. And I see a Brazilian comments here. I can't wait to see what you guys had to say. I'm going to stop the recording.